Hey everybody, it's Joel, your photo troll. I'm here at home. I just want to talk about my old uh, film camera. And uh, this is the guy that really got me started. And um, this is a Nikromat FTN. And the difference between a Nikromat and a Nikon is uh, a lot of the Nikons, like the new ZFC and stuff, they have the, the dials on top, you know, where you change your ISO and your shutter speed here and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And what I really loved about this is you change your shutter speed with this little lever here. So while you're shooting, you can hold it like this and change your shutter speed depending on what the lighting is doing or whatever, you know? And I wanted to say with film, a lot of the time, a lot of the values are set. You know, it's like uh, I'd come into a room, I'd see it was pretty dang dark. So I would crank my aperture all the way up to 1.4. I know my ASA is at 400. So those two apertures are set. I'm at 1.4, ASA 400. And then you just change your shutter speed depending on the changing light. So if it gets darker, you slow your shutter speed down. If it gets lighter, you speed your shutter speed up. But your aperture and your ASA stay the same. And then, say if I was outside, I would put my aperture on, say, F8. And F8 gives you a nice medium depth of field to where things really far away start to blur out, but most everything is very sharp. I just set it to F8, and I know that my ASA is set on 400, it hasn't changed. So the only thing, then you just change your um, shutter speed, depending on whether your scene is lighter or darker. So in the shade, I would slow it down, in the sun, I'd speed it up. And then a lot of times, say, shooting super bright outdoor soccer game or something, set your aperture to f16 the smallest it'll go you know and uh, I don't know if you can see that but but you're outside in the Sun you just set it to f16 your your ASA is at 400 so you just change your shutter speed and a lot of times it would be between a 500th and a thousandth which is as fast as this thing goes so if I was shooting at a thousandth of a second at F16, ASA 400, and it was still too bright, I would just note that it was two stops overexposed. And then when I went to develop, I would underdevelop and it would even out and it would look normal. That's so if you underexpose, you overdevelop. If you overexpose, you underdevelop. Okay. But there's just something about this camera I just love it's just so tactile you know it's like you hear it you feel it you see it there we go but the I love the focus on these old manual focus lenses because it's so stiff and um I just love the feel of the shutter release and the sound of it. I, and I love the sound of the advance. And I remember back in the days when I was shooting film, I would just be like, you know, ripping through it as quick as I could. What, maybe three frames, two frames a second, you know? And it really makes you concentrate. You, you focus, you get it just exactly, and you wait for the second that something happens, boom, you know? You only get that one exposure. And that's just part of the experience of film. And I notice that you have to hold the camera a little differently. I'm using my fingers here to really hold it and my thumb along the back. I don't know if you can see my thumbs on the back like that. And then a lot of time I just am changing my focus, my aperture and my shutter speed with my left hand. You know, so it's like, but I, like I was saying, it's like a lot of the times the values are set. You just set your aperture to F5.6, you set your shutter speed to 250th your ASA is at 400 as always 
and you're set. You don't need to change anything unless the light changes, you know. When your subject goes into the shade, you could either open your aperture or you could change your shutter speed. You know, so they go into the sh they go into the shade, just slow your shutter speed down a couple notches. They come back out in the sun, speed it up a couple notches. Okay, but I just I just miss the tactile the tactile feel of this camera. You could just see and feel everything you're doing. You know. And I'm also impressed by this camera because it's mechanical. You know, there's a battery in it, but all, all the battery does is power the light meter. And if the battery dies, the light meter dies, but the shutter and the aperture and the focus all still work. So you can just guess at your exposure and just keep on going. There's nothing, it will not stop due to electrical problems, you know. It just, you'd run out of film. That's the thing. Oh, and I just wanted to show you guys, here's this little door and you open it and you open the back of the camera like that. And this shows you, I'm going to slow my shutter speed down so you guys can see maybe. Yeah, the uh, old shutter on this thing's a little bit stiff. I haven't used it much. You guys see that? And then you advance it. And you shut the door. God, I love this lens though. Everything looks so good through this lens. So I was have this new I got this used from Used Photo Pro for I think sixty dollars. It's a Vivitar Macro f2.8, and um, you can tell it has the little the little feet there, whatever that thing is called. But that that lines up with the pin on the old knicker mat here. So even though this camera is super old. You just put this on F5.6. Line the pin up with the little notch there and twist it on. And now I've got a macro lens. And the thing with the macro lens is it looks just like a regular, it works just like a regular 50 millimeter lens. But if I want to get close, I can just keep getting closer and keep getting closer and keep getting closer and keep getting closer and get all the way down to almost like, not a microscope, but a macroscope for sure. And you can see it extends all the way out like that. And But this thing is, it's, it's a completely manual lens. There's It's manual focus. I'm focusing now. And I think it's funny is the normal the normal range here is from like uh, three feet, three, four, five, seven, ten, thirty, infinity. Okay, so the the real normal range that you would see things is is just in this little throw of the focus ring, and then it just starts getting closer and closer, you know, to a ridiculous extent. But anyway, um. I was feeling kind of nostalgic for this camera, so I wanted to show you guys how to set up a more modern camera. I got my trusty Nikon D7100 here. And this thing's, you know, 20 megapixels, six frames a second, just autofocus fast as lightning, you know? And, but listen to the difference in the shutters the shutter sound here. That was two, because this thing's so quick. But I wanted to show you how you can make this camera act a lot like this one. And I'm gonna start out with taking off this stabilized autofocus lens, you know, it's totally high-tech compared to any of this stuff, you know. 
and I'm going to put the old macro lens on there. Works just fine. Okay. And so now I've got the manual focus that I had in that camera. The only difference is I've got the super fast release now, you know. And if I want to change that to where it's more like the old camera, I just push in this little button and I'm on continuous high now. I just move it to single. So when you're on single, you just take one shot, which is similar to the old knicker mat here. It gives you that same feeling to where you have to wait. You have to wait for your opportunity to hit the shutter and then hit the shutter. And so, okay, now I've got manual. I've got manual focus and I've got single release. And I just want to show you. Oh, I'm way underexposed. I didn't think about that. Okay, so my exposure with a, when you're shooting things close up, you want a, a kind of a smaller f-stop because if you have that big fat wide f <laughs> it's not fat if you have a wide f-stop you get a very shallow depth of field and as you get closer your depth of field gets more and more and more and more shallow so you really need a kind of a medium f-stop or a small f-stop just to keep things in focus because you're just taking this tiny little slice of in focus if i want to make it even more old school i'm going to uh, hit my I button here, go to set picture control, which it happens to be on, and just cruise down here to monochrome and hit OK. And now I've got a manual focus, single release, black and white camera. Oh, one thing I was going to say is uh, with black and white, you can just crank the ISO because it's just the noise doesn't show up or whatever. So I'm going to crank my ISO up to 6400. And that gives me a lot of room with my shutter speed now. I can speed up from a 50th to 125th. And that makes just a world of difference. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's how I'm making my new camera act like an old camera. Put the manual focus lens on it. Put it to single single release and switch it over to monochrome. And there you go. I've got an old old timey black and white kind of deal going. Oops. I've suddenly recaptured a lot of my film days just by doing that. And um, if I could, I would just put this lens on this camera. But this lens isn't adapted. If they have this thing called an AI conversion in it takes a little notch out of the old lens so it fits the new cameras and if you force the old lens on the new cameras you could damage it because it's not made for it so that's what I like about this lens is it's I can use it on this brand new relatively camera and it works fine on my old film camera you know so that's just one thing I like about uh, Nikon DSLRs is all those old lenses. That's one of the reasons I bought the D7100 is a lot of those old lenses work with it, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to go down memory lane with you guys there and shoot a video at home. And <laughs> I usually say see you down the river, but there's no river, so I'll see you guys later.